good morning, everyone. Nice to see you all. So I've given this talk before, and I apologize to you that have seen it before, but there is a twist at the end. So do listen, OK? So oh, is my slides not on the screen yet? I mean, I, there we go, fantastic. Um, so what I've been doing for the last two and a half years is trying to figure out how to treat lung cancer, digitally speaking, automate it, make it faster, because it's very slow. It's not being treated fast enough. That, and I'll go through the details on that. But I think you've already gone through my next slide, actually, which was a bit about myself clinician who codes, the less are spotted. Though I'm starting to spot a few in the room, which is lovely, because in my trust, there's no one else, so I feel a bit alone. But here, I feel amongst you know people that, I, uh, that understand the pain that I've gone through with my trust and so on. Um, so let's talk about lung cancer. It used to be the third biggest, let me move this chair, the third biggest um, killer in the UK. It's the fourth after COVID now. And in Gloucestershire, this is a graph of uh, referral to treatment times. And 62 days, before 62 days is what the national guideline says we should do to treat lung cancer because you get a better prognosis. Unfortunately, you can see in the bottom right, there's one at 250 days. Now, patients that are treated, 38% of patients breach that 62-day window. And it's going to shorten down to 49 days from other um, bodies in the NHS. So that percentage of people breaching is just going to get worse and worse. And there's not enough time. There's not enough money. Um, there's not enough doctors, nurses, admin staff to do this. Why not digitize? Why not automate? And that's what I've been thinking about and working on and what Tiago alluded to earlier um, over the last two and a half years. Now, lung cancer, I know there's not 87 steps on here, so bear with me. But lung cancer has 34 to 87 separate steps to get a patient from a referral, having their symptoms at the GP practice and needing a referral, to getting ultimate treatment, um, so surgery, chemotherapy, and so on. Now, it's because of this box here, there's so many steps. In that box there, we have all of these things that need to be requested. Patient needs to get the, the letter to come in. They need to come in. They need to have the test. The test needs to be looked at. It needs to be reported. It needs to be then um, a decision needs to be made from that, and so on. And then there's all these other th people you need to refer to. Now, this is a busy slide, but it's intentionally busy. There's 14 different systems that we use in Gloucestershire Trust to get a patient through the whole pathway. Now, they're all digital apart from the top right, paper-based, but they're all digital. All different systems you need to log into, you know, wait to load, find the patient, get the details, request, look, whatever. 15 different staff members to liaise with and the patient. You don't have to read all these things. These are things that we thought about. This is just a handful of the things we thought about. It's a huge bag of things that we could automate, digitize, to speed up the pathway. So we built an app. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. I was about to clap. I can see. Um, now. We called it Spiritum Duo. Spiritum is Latin for breathe. Um, I'm a spiritual doctor, so we thought we'd go with that. And Duo, this is the second time I've tried to do it. I did it in Microsoft Access before in VBA. Ouch, that was painful. But it was as a prototype. This is a prototype as well. But it's going to be in production. I'll talk about that in a sec. So Spiritum Duo, this is built, if we go on the next page, looking like the NHS website, looking like the GDS website. It's using the NHS React components, so it has the same look and feel and functionality. And this is the home page, and it shows you the things you need to look at. This Catherine Jones needs the CT pet CT looked at, and so on. And you can quickly see what's going on there. And this next page, that's nine, this is the one-on-one -on -one page. Seems familiar? And then this is one of the modal pop-outs that is looking at, well, showing you Instead of those 14 different systems, having everything in one place, showing you all the results in one place, letting you make all the requests, this is just scrolling down the page, in one place, click submit, send it off, it sends off the requests and so on to the back end in the trust and makes it all happen. Why not have WhatsApp built into one app? The way we do it at the moment is a respiratory doctor will email 
a radiologist to say, look at this scan. A few days later, he looks at the email, replies back saying, which scan? And then you can imagine these things happen. And then these emails get deleted. And then you can't remember that what correspondence that's been had. For audit purposes, is in the right place, secured, encrypted, all in one place. And why not have it so it actually connects to your phone? Bring your own device. And let's say the PET CT is back. So this is scanning for active nodes in your body. You can get notes in the middle of the ward round if you're happy to receive it and go, yes, let's go to the next thing. Let's organize an e-bus. That's a camera test into the lungs. And instead of waiting hours and days, oh, I'll just do it on the ward round. It's done. It's all sorted. Saving days, saving you know, patient lives, because it's all about prognosis, about getting to the A to B faster. And why not let the patient know that this thing's been organized? Send them a text message with a video saying, here's the hospital, here's the reception, here's the front door to the scan you're going to have, and here's the scan. Virtual walkthrough, take away some of the angst, let them not get lost in the corridors, which they do all the time. And this is a graphical representation of the pathway. What this really is trying to show in a graphical version, this is all fake patient data, by the way, that this is how far the patient is along. 62 days is where we need to get beforehand. We don't want to breach that. Now, of course, it's all fake patient data all added at the same time, so the bar's at the same point. But you can see who needs, who's, getting, who's approaching 62 days, who needs more input to try and get them treated. MDT, so multidisciplinary team meetings. It's built into this prototype. Further ideas, which we haven't built in the prototype yet, but note, just putting notes in there. Actually, that's quite a big thing. We haven't really got anything in Gloucestershire where we can put electronic notes. Graphs and statistics, audits, and further research as well. Speed runs, this is a fantastic idea um, that I've been talking about with Tiago. Why not use gamification to try and get you through this pathway? I mean, speed runs is about getting Mario from the beginning of the game to the end. Why not get the patient, the Mario, through the pathway as quickly as possible, using the same ideas with that used for gamification, tall assisted speed runs and stuff like that. I used to be a vivid gamer. If people that saw me in the arcade yesterday might say, yes, I, I was. Oh, Mario was there. Yeah, we had a great time. <laughs> right. Now, these are the sort of things that clinicians like to throw out there that we're you know, aligning with national standards, and I think these ones are important, but GERFT, get it right first time. Let's get it right now. Let's make this system work for everyone. It's open source, it's modular, any disease can use it, any trust can use it. We'll talk about that. So also the NOLCP, they're talking about taking the pathway from uh, 62 to 49 days, and the Ox, uh, the NHS service manual says use open source. I love open source. And aren't we all the same? And I was alluding to this before. All pathways are the same. A patient has a symptom. They see a doctor. They get referred to someone. They have tests. They have a discussion. They get treatment. Spirit and Duo is built to be modular enough to do all that. Of course, we haven't tested it in real life yet, but it's, we're getting there. Potential benefits. Faster pathways leading to improved patient prognosis. Better patient experience via the tailored made patient information videos while I was talking through the, you know, the virtual walkthrough. Reduce staff workload. And this is the really big problem. We, the, the lung cancer coordinators, there's three of them, spend eight to 12 hours a day just um, chasing test results. Imagine that's just all automated, automated and gets pinged to the clinician who asked for it that actually here it's back, what do you want to do? I mean, that's just so much time saved and be more patient facing and talking to patients through the difficulties of lung cancer instead of, sorry, I'm too busy trying to find out if this scan's happened or not. Um, so yeah, improve the patient experience, uh, the staff experience and aligning with the NHS national digital strategies. Now, the build. The last time I gave this, I, it was a long talk about the digital um, architecture. I'm not going to go through that today because I've got the time. But open source and modular. TypeScript front end, Python back end. Hence, I can talk about this at a Python conference. And we use DevOps um, uh, methodologies. I had two computer science, science students that Tiago helped get for me. Fantastic computer science students. I'm so sad they left me in September. 
Um, yeah, and we use agile methodologies, all part of the DevOps team. This is quite a busy slide, but this is the front end of Spirit and Duo with the uh, TypeScript. This is the back end with all the Python in it. And this is all the data stored in the different data repositories in the trust on this lower level, apart from this one down here, which is um, the Spirit and Duo PostgreSQL database. So the front end stack, let's quickly go through this so we've got some time for the questions. Single page application like Facebook, progressive web application so it's downloadable, installable onto your iPhones, onto your desktops, so you don't have to go for either App Store, don't have to have different versions for different OSs. TypeScript, like I said, React, NHS React component library, Storybook to help with the actual React components, Redux for the state management, and Apollo GraphQL for the API um, between the front end and the back end. The back end, like I said, Python, and for those that you know these frameworks, Starlet, ASGI, Ariadne, GraphQL, and also the Trust Adapter, which helps. So Spirit and Duo is built to be um, uh, modular and independent, decoupled from the back end, and it's the trust adapter that's the only thing you need to change. And I heard someone in the NHS uh, R conference yesterday talk about this, just changing the adapter bit for the different trusts. So that's the only thing you need to change, technically. Right, so this is the twist. So I built, well, I, I, I didn't build it, my students built it, but I worked within the team that built Spirit and Duo in Gloucestershire. That story's come to an end. There's no funding there, there's no support there. Hence, I'm talking, asking the question about TIF earlier. So, my colleague Grant Valance, who helped me build over the last year Spirit and Duo, really wants Spirit and Duo in Oxford. And that's where it's going next, that's where the story continues. Now, it's going to be used to treat hematology cancers and prostate cancers. 21,000 uh, anti-cancer uh, uh, drugs are prescribed in March of this year. Routine blood tests every three, six, and 12 months, and patients fall through the net. And all of this is done manually at the moment. There's not even a spreadsheet. We just book a clinic for the blood test to happen, a clinic for a blood test. And we haven't got enough clinic rooms. You know, we've got backlogs. This could all be done in outpatients without clinics, on a, you know, on a spreadsheet even, you know. Well, let's use Spirit and Duo, but as a fancy spreadsheet for this at least, and build functionality on top of it. And patients are surviving longer because of the anti-cancer drugs. Um, and the management of these patients uh, is just becoming impossible. Now, we've spoken about funding today. Funding is an issue. We currently have no funding anymore. I had funding for two computer science students last year, but nothing at the moment. This is just pure passion, sweat and tears now keeping it going. But it's gonna happen in Oxford. We're gonna have the stakeholders meetings. We're gonna be using the same methodologies that were described today. I want to thank all these people. Any questions? Thank you so much. Could we um, firstly give Mark a round of applause, please? Cool.